Welcome to the Limit Free Life Show. I'm Michelle Perkins, your host. I bring you tips, advice, and guest stories about creating work you love. Whatever type of career or business you have or want, I want to help you find more meaning, money, and happiness. Now we are live from Hollywood. Hello and welcome to the Limit Free Life Show. So glad you're here and I have a fantastic guest today. So we are going to jump right in. I had asked Kim O'Hara if she would come on my show and I had mentioned somewhere that the name of the show was Limit Free Life and she very sweetly said, oh my gosh, that is just exactly what I want to be talking about right now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very thrilled that she's here with us today. Uh, this show is for those of you who are transitioning your career, starting growing businesses, trying to really get a, an understanding and a better relationship with your money, all the things that help you to create work you love. And so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our guest today, Kim, Kim O'Hara, so sorry, and uh, read you a little bit about her before we get started. Let's see. Well, here's my, my reading issue. Okay. So intuitive book coach Kim O'Hara's high profile clients trust her coaching when writing their books due to not just her two decades in Hollywood producing and writing movies, but the navigation of her own personal trauma journey. She guides them as influencers to share their epic journeys. Her clients include the creator of Good Morning America, the founder of The Brow Gal, and other successful influencers who speak of their unique experiences in careers ranging from public health to global money exchange. Kim Hope hosts a monthly online workshop, Activate Your Story, encouraging anyone with a story inside to take that first toe dip into writing about their lives, their ups and downs of life, and the path to success. Kim is a nationwide main stage speaker, as well as a guest on numerous radio shows and podcasts. She engages audiences with her, her depth and wit, and she's also the creator of the Influential Women with a Story Inside interview series, talking with women who have been the firsts in their fields. She will keynote the Young Eager Writers Conference in Charlotte, North Carolina this year, or next year, 2020. She is in, <laughs> I'm already into 2020. She is the published <laughs> author of the memoir, Kicking Abuse in the Ass. You can read more about her at astoryinside.com, and you can learn more about her right now on the Limit Free Life show. So, Kim, welcome. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're here. I feel like I need to take that line out about wit, because what happens if I'm not having a witty day? Oh, really you will. I, I have full <laughs> trust in that. So um, so thank you. Thank you for coming you for on. Me. And I, too, am really excited to hear about your journey. So uh, I know it's an interesting one, and I'm excited for our audience to hear. And so can you go ahead and start with what brought you to being an intuitive book coach? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I was in the movie business for mm -hmm. a long time and knew that I didn't want to do that anymore. <clears throat> I um, kind of floundered for a while in that big transition. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the conference that I met you at. That's right. And basically... Um, got up at a microphone and sobbed hysterically in front of 250 women <laughs> about how I didn't know what I was going to do in my life and was instructed to be a book coach, literally. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, I really needed direction. Yeah. And I think as women, like when other women give us direction when we're really floundering mm -hmm. and we take it, right. we can go to that limitless right. place. Oh. And I have... Yes, and in a short time. I mean, as yeah. business development goes, mm -hmm. I think you just mentioned it was five years. Yeah. It was not a long time to get mm -hmm. something moving in the way that you have. So you. we'll talk a little about how you managed to do that. Sure. Um, and, and, you know, just a second ago, you mentioned, too, the value of going to these conferences, meeting people, and just how... It could be years later that mm -hmm. you end up reconnecting with mm -hmm. someone, and it's and really us, fun, and years. that's us. That's right. And <laughs> I get your emails, and I, I kind of see what you're doing, but we haven't had that chance to have a conversation like this. So right. You really never great. doubt a relationship mm -hmm. that you strike up with someone at a conference or mm -hmm. on a phone call. I think there's a lot of people, like, I understand sales, and I understand mm -hmm. selling, and it's what we need to do, especially right. if we believe our products and services are going to help and heal and mm -hmm. you know change someone, right? right. We 
have to sell. Right. But I think people come also in it with that, like, well, you're not somebody I need next. You're not somebody. Yeah. And you yeah. just don't. You just don't know. Like, so be kind and courteous to everybody. I know. And then if you feel like the group you're networking with is not the level you need to be anymore. Mm hmm kindly rise up to the next level but right. i think people go in and then they try to get more from that level and right. they, it might be time to either leave or see what you can do for others right well and you know this is off topic a tiny but not really it's related mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. i just checked a voicemail in my car and it was a woman who i had met years ago mm. at, at an event that we had done together and um I, I i was having trouble even placing her face and and it was a call about needing some service and and it's just kind of remarkable that that happens really remarkable yeah so wonderful i yeah, i kind of want to just go back a second ago you were talking about your movie career and how mm. you just were feeling like it was time for it to end mm. and because we we have a lot of transitioners listening sure what what was that feeling and what how clear was it to you and why um you know and I'm not going to go back to like when I was five mm -hmm. but you know <laughs> really growing up I wanted to be an actress and um got the impression that that wasn't going to be supported okay it wasn't even just the impression it was just there wasn't support in terms of mm -hmm. like college and everything okay so when I went into you know college to be an actress producing seemed like a better gig mm -hmm. which is ridiculous because producing is incredibly hard right but I then went into the shadows on the other side of the camera mm-hmm and made that conscious decision and then became a screenwriter. So now I'm in a room for eight hours alone in like the yeah. dark, you know, nobody needs to talk to me and I can just hide. <laughs> right. And I think when you are not destined for that life, mm -hmm. it stuff just starts to happen to pull you out of the shadows, yeah. whether you like it or not. Now right. you could go the easy road mm -hmm. and surrender, or you mm -hmm. could do what I did and like fight it tooth mm -hmm. and nail for 20 something mm -hmm. years. And that's yeah. what I did. and. Um, ended up, you know, discovering that I wanted to be on the other side of the camera a little bit more. Right, right. Um, it's like shocking to me that I'm even on a pot, you know, that I'm even in videos <laughs> and people like actually want me to speak on stages oh, because when oh. I first did movies and I'd have to speak at premieres, I was so, fr I was so terrified. That is so interesting. And I think people do that. They, they have something they want so they get close to it. They do like a something that is related mm -hmm. but not it exactly and it doesn't satisfy mm -hmm. like yeah mm -hmm. okay so um so getting to the point where you had the the light bulb went off you thought book coach then what you know building a business is not for the faint of heart you know <laughs> it's, it's like it's, getting it's, old it's, yeah. it's interesting um well, what happened was when I went to that conference, I was still doing a, a like a little bit of a day job. I okay. was substitute teaching. Okay. And what was beautiful about substitute teaching was it was bringing me much closer with my children. Mm -hmm. And my relationships with them were a little bit fractured from okay. divorce, um, from some struggles I had with addictions. Mm -hmm. And so I was putting that back together. So mm -hmm. being near them at school was really kind of a beautiful thing. Yeah. You know, the universe put in my path, right. literally put in my path. Nice. Um, like someone said, why don't you be a substitute teacher? Again, I was like, okay. I mean, I was so <laughs> desperate for direction. And so while I was substitute teaching, I went to that conference and I remember someone said to me, I was like, I'm trying to build a business, but I'm also like trying to go to work eight hours a day. And they're like, right. yeah, no, eventually you need to make the leap. Mm, yeah. And I did the math. Okay. I'm talking about money. I did yeah. the math and that job was not even going to cut the mustard. Yeah. So I either had to take the leap and just start. And I got my first client within a week. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Taking the leap. Excellent. And I've never, haven't stopped You since. listened when Kendall yeah, yeah, or Kylash yeah, yeah, or somebody yeah. said, go get clients. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. I was, I, we, we have a common mentor. And exactly. They, we get, would get caught up in website building and all yeah. of this stuff. Like, and they'd be like, why don't you go just go make get a client? Some money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, good advice. So, um, yeah. So what, what even made you like, you know, did you have any of the kind of worthiness issues like, you know, how do I coach people to write a book? Had you already written a book at that I time? I had not. Okay. So, so I hear, here's there? my book, yeah. Kicking a Beast in the Ass. And um, I had written the book um, through the process of recovering through okay. healing from abuse. Okay. And um, was sitting on it. 
Mm. And I'm going to work every day and telling these amazing women that are writing these searing stories about mm. the ups and downs of their lives and trauma and tragedy. And I'm like, you go, girl. You get it out in the world. You yeah. splay yourself out. You be vulnerable. And I remember one day a client said to me, what happened to your book? And I was like, um. <laughs> She's like, you're, you're not going to publish you're telling everyone you know yeah and that put me to the task I was in the library like the week later and really it was only needing one more draft and this is a beautiful story I went to Barnes and Noble and I was visualizing who was my publisher Mm -hmm. and I tell clients to do that I say just go pick up your favorite books and see who publishes them and see who the agents are and write it down and just manifest okay and did land that publisher oh that is so cool. yeah the first one I picked how did, how did you, did you reach out to them after you saw like yeah. when you okay I called them wow. and ironically at the same time a woman in New York who I had been connected to through LinkedIn also gave me the same name within oh, the week, same week okay well there when you that go. happens you just yeah, go you just know. <laughs> wow okay so it was mm. pretty smooth um, yeah they they've done a great job you know smaller publishers um, in their waterside press have done a lot of great things, Mm -hmm. but they just don't have any money. So they don't really promote you at all. Right. So you're really on your own. So I always tell, you know, my clients when you get a book, you know, publisher, even if it's not completely self, because this wasn't self, because they paid for the book to get put up and printed. I paid for the cover. Okay. Um, you're really not getting a lot more than right. that. So right. okay. sometimes when you self-publish, you can get companies that are really willing to do a lot for you, mm. but you are gonna pay them five yeah. to $10,000. If okay. not, that's even the lower end. Right. I just didn't pay anything. That's very nice, yeah, okay. I just figured I'm gonna have to market it myself anyway. Right. I didn't give them any money, you know? And it's a, it's a memoir, correct? It's a memoir okay. and it has writing prompts throughout all of it that tell you how I wrote my way through recovery. And so oh, if it and then, oh, and it's broken down and this was just said to me you know now that the book's out I have people coming to me and telling me what they liked about the book. Oh, and wow. a woman just yesterday said to me said you know what I love about it she said it's not linear. You broke it down in 20 chapters by topic. Mm-hmm. So it's how spirituality was affected by abuse. Mm-hmm. How relationships with your children was affected by abuse. How sexuality was affected by can I say sexuality on the show? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a big topic um how that was affected and I and then I help I explain like this is what I wrote about to get through it and that gives people so it's sort of a guidebook oh I love that that's mm-hmm. and that's a, I mean it's it's like a journal almost it's and, like journaling through recovery from oh, abuse I of any that. kind of any kind it's not even just you know the sexual abuse it's the physical it's the mental it's Right, right. And I would imagine it it has transferability, too, just to anybody going through some kind of a transition or a challenge or... Anything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. One of my clients read it yesterday. She's a um, a state attorney. Mm. And I didn't... There's a lot of stuff in here about some, you know, precarious things I've done. Right. Okay. (laughs) So I was willing to put it out there. Yeah. And so I always go, so what do you think about me now? You know? She goes, well, life just has a lot of twists and turns. It was very sweet. <laughs> oh, that is fascinating. So I think for people that haven't even had abuse, it's just an interesting, they get to see this is what it looks like when you're willing to talk about your stuff. Right, right. And how much did writing it contribute to your recovery? Oh, my God. That was huge. I mean, even if you don't publish your book, writing yeah. your way through your journey and coming out on the other side mm. has created that limitless eyes wide open like and and yeah. it published in 2017 so the last two years have been an up level like it's almost like sometimes I have to catch my breath I'm like mm. it's all moving like it's all moving a little too like things are growing you know and you have to take that That's step great. back and it yeah. feels good but at the same time you're like wow I didn't really know the book was going to do that right so back to business building <laughs> back to business back to business building yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, okay. So you started. You got the one client, and then how did you progress from there? What do you What do you do now with clients, and how do you? <sighs> yeah, it's such an amazing journey. Um, intuitive is in front of the title, mm-hmm. and that came later. That okay. came through this great uh, branding coach. Her name is Tiffany Scott, mm. and she's in Austin now. Okay. Um, and I did a six month mastermind with her. Nice. And I'll, I'll never forget, like I had been in business, I think like 
two years. Right. And she had me do this exercise where I wrote all these words of like what I am, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And it was so weird to be like, I don't know. Yeah. Like I didn't know how to describe myself. Right. All the words I had to describe myself were slightly negative. Like I thought mm-hmm. I was, you know, like, Interesting. you know, aggressive, you know, like mm-hmm. aggressive right. or like just stuff I had learned working in the movie business, mm-hmm. just st- tough, tough. Right. And she helped me really uncover the intuitive part. Oh, I love that. And then okay. I ran. I, then I had, remember that like moment where I was like, "Can I put that on my website?" <laughs> yeah. We were calling her crying and being like, "Everyone's gonna laugh at me. They're gonna <laughs> no. be like, you're not intuitive." And she's like, "Oh, but you are." Yeah. And I was like, "I am intuitive." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's just that empath. Like I, I'm very much an empath with yeah. with people's emotions yeah. just from that growing up in a rough mm-hmm. situation. Um, navigating life on my own pretty much from, you know, a young right. age on. Right. You just become intuitive and empathic to mm. people. I think it's, you, I think you're born with it and then I think it also gets developed. Right, right. And so when I sit down with someone and they start to tell me their story and like, they're like, this is my story and this is what I do, part of me sort of goes, hmm well, we're going to be working because I feel, I can right. feel where you're not stepping into your power yet. Mm. Oh, I'm And so, so she had me put that on. We put okay. that on the website. Nice. Yeah. And I haven't changed it since. That's that's really Yeah. Cool. So that's another transformation. I always mm-hmm. say to people, be open, like be be ready. Right. Right. Um so when when people work with you, are they usually do they have their it's funny cuz I got off the phone with you. We had our conversation and the next conversation I had was a woman who was talking about, yeah, you know, I have this book idea. <laughs> oh, that's perfect, oh, that's you know. Here's so, her number. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mentioned to her something that you had said, that writing your first book is, you know, this huge hurdle. And yeah. So I'd love for you to talk <clears throat> about, for people who, you know, have sort of been sitting on that idea, mm-hmm. why is it such a hurdle? What does it mean to get through it and actually sure. write it? What what? Well, I did, I have this... Um, this great, brilliant, I'm just, I love to promote the people that help me because they're just so, they're amazing. Um, Recently I worked with a a business coach and his name is Mike Walker and um, he got me on the survey Mm -hmm. and the survey is just this beautiful tool that I never knew existed Hmm. where you create a Google survey and you literally ask people, so what holds you back from writing a book? Right, right. Because if not, you're just guessing or extrapolating or projecting. Yeah, no, it is really interesting. I resisted that to my website guy who is a mentor of mine. I talk to him every week. Um, he talked about it for years. So we finally did the survey, and it was interesting the what people really cared about and what they didn't care about so much. And like you say, you're guessing, you're making a bunch of assumptions, and you know. And you're marketing to the wrong pain exactly. points, the yeah. ones that you think. Right. And often they're like that next level pain point. Right. They're not the sale pain, pain point. They're right. the they're the deeper pain points that then that's why they're you're coaching them. Right. Right. And we found out that the three hurdles for people uh, were time. Mm-hmm. They just didn't believe they had the time to write right. a book. They just couldn't even fathom it. It just seemed the, like this massive thing. Like it couldn't be systemized. Yeah. And that's what I've done is systemize the process. Even though it's a beautiful, amazing, creative, incredible process, mm-hmm. there's a system yeah. uh, okay. to it to get it done. Yeah. And um, structure. Mm-hmm. They were like, how do you even right. cook right. chapters? I can relate to both of those. I mean, I've, I've thought often about doing this, but... Definitely the time and the... And the time the, and the structure. I don't, my brain isn't very structured in the first yeah. place, so trying to, yeah. Okay. And for me, that's like second nature because mm-hmm. I've been manipulating and organizing and arranging screenplays mm-hmm. and books to screen and books and just writing my whole life. So yeah. to me, that's how I think. Okay. Love so that. I don't expect anyone else to think that way right. unless they are like me. Right. Um, and then the third one is I'm not a writer. And... The people that come to me vary in talent with writing. Some have been writing for a really long time and have mm-hmm. like a certain uh, ability to write really strong sentences. Right. And other, other people are a little bit, you know, they, they're a little more conversational. Right. They're not there yet. But I work with everybody on every mm-hmm. range just to get that book out. And yeah. I explain to them, I said, you're a writer if you have something to say and mm-hmm. you want to put it down on the page. Yeah, I love that. That's the criteria. Right. Like who says you're an imposter? Right. Like, this whole thing that. Who who is that? Who are those? Who's the collective panel that's right. telling you you can't be a writer? And there usually is someone in their history has told them that they're too loud, they talk too much, mm-hmm. they need to be quiet, their opinion's not worthy. Right. 
well, and the world's changed too, because it used to be real writers got their books published, and they, you know, they went through the whole process mm -hmm. of people looking at them and reading them and rejecting them, and you know, right. it was, right. you know, so it was the lucky few, I think, right. who got to write. But now it's not. Now it's, mm -hmm. you know, which is lovely. I mean, it's there, the good news is that there's a lot of books. The bad news is there's a lot of books, <laughs> and there's a lot of bad books. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. So, okay, so those are the three beliefs people have. Those not enough time, beliefs. don't know how to structure, and hey, just I'm just not a writer. And then I asked further, like, well, what do you want to do? Like, mm -hmm. what's your well, why? Mm -hmm. Like, why do you want to write a book? Right. And a lot of people said, I really want to help other people. I want to okay. help other women. I want to, like, share my experiences so they're not lost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people out, the, out in the world that don't want to do that. Yeah. So I say to them, you have been given the calling. Okay. As annoyed okay. as you are. Because sometimes they're just, people are annoyed. Like, oh, I have to write a book. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you're like, yeah, and that's not going to go away. <laughs> yeah. It's going to stay with you. Yeah. So I guess you would say if, if you have that thought in your head at all, it probably means you should write a book. You should write a book. Because a lot of people book. don't have that thought. Because there's something inside of you that, that the stories that are inside of you are going to lead you to that gateway to that next phase in your life and you're literally keeping the door shut you're not oh, opening that's, it that's a great and that's visual. what a lost yeah. life yeah and you know it's a good point because i do because i've had the thought i'd like to write a book i can sort of assume everybody has that thought mm -hmm. so you know why no. even get into that game the entire world is thinking the same thing and but so it's kind of interesting. That, yeah, if you sit with someone that doesn't want to write a book, they are so funny about it. They're like, yeah, I don't want to write a book. <laughs> okay. And they don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> okay. You're like, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, they're 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 clear, but they might have something else they want to do mm. that they are passionate mm -hmm. about. Right. You know, so right. it's like if everybody wanted to write a book, we'd have way too many books. Yeah, yeah. So people are writing books to help other people. Mm -hmm. They're writing them just to share their to knowledge. Inspire and, and educate yeah. and inform, yeah. And are you helping people who want to write fiction at all? or is it I all have not done fiction okay. um, because that process is so different. Yeah. It really, really is. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of character development yeah. in the very beginning. And even though when they come to me for nonfiction and memoir, the outlining process is something I have them stay in okay. for a while. Like, we really make sure that outline's good yeah. because that's the foundation. Um, that can be done fairly quickly in memoir and okay. in nonfiction because you do, like, my clients do about three drafts with me. Okay. So through wow. those three drafts, we tend to move a lot around. Mm. We figure it out as we go mm -hmm. after we have that base outline. But fiction... You kind of have to, you really have to know the plot. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's you know? a little beyond me, how people put those. I'm always fascinated at how stories come so, together like that. I think that. it's beautiful, but, yeah. you know, yeah. I haven't gone there yet. So the advantage, uh, you have this idea, you have these limiting beliefs, and so getting past that, and what does it, what does it do for people when they actually do write their first book? It's amazing what I've seen. You know, I've seen incredible things happen mm. with my clients. You know, you just see like the lights come on or you mm. see them realize like what they what they've been through. What I love is they realize what they've been through is not for naught. Mm. You know, oh, I love like that. their yeah. bodies have gotten really hurt by being bodybuilders for the wrong reasons. Mm. And now they're pre mm. preaching healthy dieting and weightlifting right. or, you know, they have had aging parents and they want to help people with those questions mm. or, you know, they've had the ups and downs of business and they've been really rooked and they want to share that so other yeah. women don't have that happen. Yeah. Oh, they're wonderful. able to be on the other side of that and see, you know, it wasn't for nothing. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is really like my life, you right. know, right. And, and you see them start to advance and change. Yeah. Oh, that's, and then the, uh, is, uh, you know, what I don't like is people who say, oh, write your book and it'll be like a, a giant business card, you know, mm -hmm. and it's basically the whole purpose of it is just to get you in speaking yeah. opportunities or in the door with, and, and there's really no meat to it. Yeah. Um, so there's a difference there between how some people do it and how you're doing it. I don't it, have I a know, ton but, of those clients. Mm -hmm. I have a few and I, I wouldn't say that they... It, they use it as a business card. What they do is that they might go out like my my client Rita Connor. She has you know the wow years, right? Hmm. Where she's That's like in her later years, you oh, know, okay. late sixties, and she's talking about that third act, right? Oh, like, what are you going to do next? Yeah. She's amazing. Okay. So her book has all sorts of exercises in it mm. that she can't possibly say to you. 
Right. Even in a one day workshop. Okay. Right. Yeah. So if someone wants to work with her, they might, you know, hire her to coach after that. Mm -hmm. But in the process of writing the book with me, I did all the exercises. Oh, cool. Oh my God. <laughs> the things that. that I realized, and I'm not even in my third act. I'm, gonna, I'm not even entered my second act yet. <laughs> and I was like, wow. And I would call her and I would say, Rita, this is like gold. Wow. Yeah. So I get that perk. I get to like. Well, I'm going to look at hers. I am headed into that. Third I know. Sometimes event. I think, what else? What do I need to change? Can I find that client? Because yeah, <laughs> their it, book will change me. That's so cool. I love it. Yeah. I do yeah. get shaped by them. What's your favorite part of what you're doing now? Oh, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> I love the outlining process. Mm -hmm. I love sitting down and really digging in and mm -hmm. like getting to the root of what they want to talk about. Are you interviewing them to get to that? Um, or? We are, yeah. We are okay. sitting for five hours Ooh. in private. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and they've done a full questionnaire before that that's pretty oh. deep as well that I've reviewed. Okay. In my group program, which is two weeks, uh, 12 weeks, they do um, a shorter outline. Okay. So, not not a shorter. They'll do the whole t outline. They do a shorter meeting with me, so it's okay. only like two hours. Okay. Because they're paying less money. And right. It comes down to fiscal, um, you know, investment. But they still get the same deal because they do an outline program online. So I made it work for people that don't can't afford or don't sure. want the six month process. But I still love hearing like what they've realized and what they've come mm -hmm. up with. I love when they connect the dots, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. I connect the dots for them, and they right. go, "Wow." even see that pattern That's in my life that really is so fun. much fun and yeah. i try to like it's not a therapy session right so right. i try not to get too over analytical but sometimes it's so hard yeah <laughs> So that's the starting point. And then are you working? Are they just going off and being in a, in a room by themselves writing? Mm -hmm. And then, but are they coming? I mean, they, how, do you, I coach how do you coach them every somebody week. to write a book? Okay. okay. So they'll send me the chapter and then they'll send it mm. to me on Google Doc in the first draft. Uh, okay. And then I'll read it and then I'll give them notes. And then we do a one hour coaching call on private. Wow. On group, we do a one hour in the group. <clears throat> okay. Oh, that's interesting. So what is the time frame that you could expect to get your book done? By? Well, I think either program, it's eight months. Eight months. That's pretty good. Yeah. Within a year, you've got a book. Yeah. With, so, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Most, pe most of my clients are done within a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Very I interesting. I know you wait so long and then boom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned something interesting about the first book being so difficult. And then after that, it's a it's a kind of a different game, right? It, you would think. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I I um, have written. I wrote the second book after. I wrote oh. it immediately after. Oh wow! And it's four hundred pages, and it's like n in my drawer. Okay. I should probably never say this because, but there's a reason for that. I had to get that out. Mm. That second book was in me, and I had to get that out. But there's something about the material that wants to be something else. Interesting. And okay. so I'm flowing through that with my writing coach. Interesting. So I have a writing coach. Yeah. So okay. I wrote the book and then I got to that and it was really just a vomit. Mm. And then I reread it and I thought, oh, this is not, when you do things without support, it right. just can be just a little bit of a mess. Right. So right. it's a mess. So okay. this is why I don't tell people to write by themselves. <clears throat> and so the writing coach and I are working through, um, she's this amazing woman called Rory Green. Mm. And she's a, she has a, or, um, a group called Write to Be You. And she brings women together to journal and write. Okay. And, and she's, just am she's just amazing. And I'm doing some work with her right now to understand what that book means mm -hmm. and what that content is. Mm -hmm. It's really exciting to be on the other side. And so if someone yeah. came to me and said, I did this first book, I have a second book, and I haven't done anyone's second books yet okay. in my career yet. Okay. It'd be exciting to yeah. have a return client. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, they, they, I, I, think it would be a, I think it would be a really interesting process because you have this, like, hanging over you that this is sort of what it was. Right. Now what is it going to be? You have yeah. to almost clean the slate. And yeah. that's what I'm trying to do. Mm, that's and I really needed help. Right, right. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that brings up a lot of questions, actually. So I, I want to jump into something because I probably have that belief that there's not enough time. Mm -hmm. And I could see where mm -hmm. you could help people with the structure because that's kind of, they could just follow your lead right, and right, right, do right. what you say. Um, <clears throat> And I can see where you could convince them that they, in fact, don't need to be a writer. Um, 
but the time piece how do people manage that because even if you tell them what to do and tell them to time block and you need this mm -hmm. many hours they have to actually sit down and do it yes that's a great question <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me Thinking um, of myself i was just texting a client on the way here mm -hmm. saying did you write did you do the 20 minutes? We had to break her day down to 20 minute chunks. Oh, interesting. Okay. And she had to get her staff on board and her family on board. Wow. So she had to say, I'm gonna go right for 20 minutes. I'm gonna go right for 20 minutes. It's okay. Angela's 20 minute time. I'm gonna go right for 20 <laughs> minutes, right? Other clients, I have another client, Alan, who is one of the busiest businessmen I mean, maybe there's a lot of busy businessmen. I'm sure there are. But he is my first super really busy businessman client. He's always on a plane to somewhere, whether okay. it's Dallas or... Um, and he uh, he's just like writing on planes and writing in airports mm. and mm. writing in hotel rooms. Okay. And, just, and he says that bringing me on is the best thing he ever did because mm -hmm. if he had tried to do this by himself, he never would have written. Yeah, you'd never find the time. There's always be something that no. comes in. I, I know, find he that He calls even, me the taskmaster. And I think it's a writing thing because, I mean, at least for me, I whether it's a book or a newsletter blog or whatever, it, it's still that thing that I, I do everything else but. Yeah, it's I don't true. know what that is really well, because. that's just resistance yeah. or thinking everything else is more important or not seeing it's hard like the things that we do in life that like whether it's coming here and doing an interview there's a finish mm -hmm. there's instant gratification yeah um hire you know bringing on a client or going to a conference and meeting there's just you you feel like there's some kind of like monetary mm -hmm. gratification mm -hmm. writing a book it's not clear what the monetary gratification is although it is there i mean it's, it's huge it, right it's right. huge i mean you you change and you become more worthy of yourself mm -hmm. and you become more elevated and therefore you attract more people and then mm -hmm. you charge more money and it just kind of goes right. with it but when you're writing your brain starts to say this is ridiculous right we've got other things to do yeah that are actually tangible okay who do you think you are Yes. That's the biggest one. It's definitely a long-term proposition. There's a mm -hmm. long-term return, and it's a kind of a long-term process. Right. And so you have to get out of that short-term right. thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, of course, as my dad always said, you always want to be looking at the long-term yeah. to be successful. So <laughs> there you go. Um, just very quickly, a couple of things that having a published book will do for you from a business standpoint. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're out on the stage, you can mm -hmm. say, if you liked what I do here um, and what I've said here, uh, and you're not ready to make that leap yet to hiring me as your coach, mm -hmm. or you can read my book, mm -hmm. and that'll right. get help you get to know me. Right. Um, you can put author on anything mm -hmm. you have, mm -hmm. any title or business card or LinkedIn right. or anywhere. Right. Um, and it's 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 a moniker, you know, to say to put on your website or, you know, just to that that educated extra educated piece right. that I had I have so much expertise and yeah. so much knowledge right. that I filled a whole book. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I love that. And, and it's true for a mm -hmm. lot of people. I yeah. mean, and, and blogging t like is mon is 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 a momentary thing. Mm -hmm. When you write a book, you're like That's true. you're like I believe this. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm much that I'm going to print it mm -hmm. and I'm going to put it out there. Mm -hmm. But a blog, you're I mean, I'm not putting out bloggers. Bloggers no, are amazing. I, I agree but a blog you, you can sort of like, well, I didn't like that post. Right. Yeah, it's a really nice legacy piece, you know. For yeah, it's a wonderful leave legacy your piece. Stamp out there. Yeah, and, for, and people yeah. have come to me. That's a good point, and written just to get it down about their families and right. what they've been through that might never publish. Yeah, yeah, what Couple a beautiful people. thing. Yeah. So your Activate program, that's a monthly workshop that you do yes. for people who might be thinking about writing. Yes. Okay, and yeah. so how does that work? Just um, it's you know. every uh, month, mm -hmm. and eventually in 2020 it'll be you know, available for people to just download as an right. evergreen product. Right. Right now, they do get me okay. um, live. Nice. nice. Um, it's tomorrow, actually. Oh. Well, we're, we don't want to put dates on this cast, but it's in Octo October 24th. And then okay. if you go to my website, storyinside.com, there's a pull-down tab that says online webinar. And okay. you can see every month it's it'll be there. 
Nice. It's so inexpensive. It's forty nine dollars. Oh, that's a bargain. Which is an hour and a half with me and oh, a small group, nice. and we go through a series of writing prompts. And at the oh. end of it, then you know you have an opportunity to talk with me further. I love that. Okay, so that's yeah. in person or webinar? It's webinar. Webinar. It's on Zoom. Cool. Yeah. So anywhere All in the right. country, anywhere in the world. Wow, I'm going to yeah. do that one day. Yeah. That's really yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, you'd love it. Yeah, I would love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm loving this conversation. It's kind of, uh, it's re reinvigorating my thinking Creative about. Juices. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. So, one last m message to people: if if they've been on the fence about this, or if they've just thought about it at all. Um, what would you say to them? I would say, you know, step into where you're limitless. Step into the possibilities nice. and believe that the life that you've led is definitely for a reason. There is a purpose for why you've been on this trajectory and on this path. And if, you know, you hold back now, then just imagine what you can miss out on by not writing your book. Yeah, I could see people feeling at some point like, wow, it's really sad that nobody's yeah. ever getting to hear this story yeah. in some yeah, ways so true. yeah so everybody has probably a life that's book worthy I absolutely mean, yeah and even absolutely. if you don't think you do once you start digging in with them and doing right. the five-hour interview it'll it'll be revealed to mm -hmm. them that they've got enough there to and believe believe that your path to people reading your book is there yeah believe there's enough for everyone Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> well, with that, we're going to we're going to wrap up here, but let people know how they can get a hold of you. We've Absolutely. mentioned it, but give them all the ways. <laughs> okay, okay. So, a storyinside.com okay. is really the best way. It's my website. It's where I have my blog, it's where I have, you know, the online webinar to sign up. It's okay. where, you know, you can email me. Um, and do a 15 minute free uh, consultation mm, with me nice. about what they someone thinks they should do next. Right, right. Okay. The best place Any uh, other social media places? Oh, or? absolutely. Instagram, a story inside, Facebook. Mm -hmm. I have a, a story inside page. I'm on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, you can buy my book, Kicking Abuse in the Ass, on nice. Amazon. And if you do buy it, please do a review because that helps other survivors get oh, access to nice. the book. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I hope people, you will look up a story inside .com and, and check out the workshop. That sounds yeah, the webinar. Tomorrow. That sounds really wonderful. Yeah. So, well, as always, thank you for being here. We're here every Wednesday at one o'clock. I want to thank you being go.com and shy for engineering our show here today. <laughs> and, um, Listen, go out there and create your own limit-free life. Make whatever changes you need to do and write whatever books you need to write and really go for it and make this life as, as big and beautiful as you can. So have a great week. I think one of the most important messages I have to share with the world about the work that I do is that your work is yours to create. This is your piece of art that you can create in your life. And there's really nothing stopping you. Overall, most of us can learn what we need to learn and figure out what we need to figure out and create that fabulous career or business that we dream about. And there's really no reason to think that you can't. My name is Michelle Perkins, and I am the CEO and founder of a company called Limit Free Life. And I help men and women to make dramatic change in their lives so that they can have the fulfillment, fun, and financial prosperity that they have always wanted to find through their work. The main services I offer through Limit Free Life are one-on-one -on -one private coaching, group coaching, trainings and seminars, and business consulting. My signature service is one-on-one -on -one coaching over a period of time, three months, six months, even a year. It really allows a person to decide on an outcome that they desire and then for us to work together to really achieve that outcome in full. The type of clients that I typically work with are professional men and women who are driven to do more who might be entrepreneurs, but also career professionals who work in organizations who are really looking to do more with their lives and very open to thinking in new ways about what they're doing and who are willing to take responsibility, do the work, make some changes, and uh, who don't say I can't a whole lot. Clients up-level in a number of ways. For some, they start a business after being in the corporate world. 
for others, they have an existing business and they really figure out the key and the formula to making that business grow and take off. For some, it's a matter of really developing courage. And for many, it's a matter of up-leveling their view of themselves, what they're capable of, how powerful they are, what their strengths are, and where they can go in life. What I see also is that there's a spark that kind of gets lit and that flame keeps growing within them and there are things that they want that maybe they were reluctant to even express that they wanted and now they just go for it. They have bigger wants and bigger dreams than they had before and the sense that they can achieve those things. I feel very strongly that money beliefs are foundational to developing a business that can scale and grow and, and become the business that you want it to be, whatever level of success that is. And for people who feel stuck or uh, their business isn't going the way they want, a lot of times it comes back to some of these money beliefs. So as a certified money mindset coach, I have the training to help people understand where their hidden money beliefs are either interfering in their lives or businesses or coming into play in some fashion in all the decisions that they're making, both in their, in their business and in their life. The overall mission behind my work is to help people love their work, to find satisfaction, fulfillment, fun, and also to be financially prosperous in what they're doing. Uh, that combination to me is a perfect uh, recipe for making work a great part of your life. And so that's my vision, is for people to see uh, work and money as allies in their life and things they can lean on so that they have something that makes them feel important and, and something that gives them a place to go to, to develop a sense of identity and purpose and meaning in the world. My greatest hope for my clients is that they will develop a holistic relationship with work, money, and life. And there won't be this separation where they go to work and then they live their life after work. And they will develop work or businesses that they love, that they look forward to going to, and they give them the freedom and the income and the happiness that they're looking for in their life. I think one of the most important